So now I want to turn to an amazing piece of literature that really shaped the country in the middle of the 19th century. Uh, it's a book titled Uncle Tom's Cabin, written by Harriet Beecher Stowe. And Lincoln would go on to say that really it was the book that set the country on fire to the evils of slavery. But before I get to Stowe, I want to continue this theme of democracy and our expectations for democracy by turning to a very powerful poem written by Walt Whitman titled Democratic Vistas. Here, Whitman tries to um, get a sense as to what the democratic spirit is like in the middle of the 19th century. And working off of this theme is of whether or not we're heading in the right direction or the wrong direction and what the hope is for democracy. So let's hear what Whitman has to say. I say we had best look our times and lands searchingly in the face, like a physician diagnosing some deep disease. Never was there perhaps more hollowness at heart than at present, and here in the United States. Genuine belief seems to have left us. The underlying principles of the states are not honestly believed in. We live in an atmosphere of hypocrisy throughout. Remember that quote, we live in an atmosphere of hypocrisy throughout. Well, can we turn to our Declaration of Independence? And can we turn to the Constitution? And can we turn to all of those celebrated documents of the late 18th century for inspiration or hope? Well, here Whitman has a response for that. As to the political section of democracy, which introduces and breaks ground for further and vaster sections, Few probably are the minds, even in these Republican states, that fully comprehend the aptness of the phrase, the government of the people, by the people, and for the people, which we inherit from the lips of Abraham Lincoln, a formula whose verbal shape is homely wit, but whose scope includes both the totality and all the minutia of the lesson. What is American society or what should American democratic society be about? A government of the people, by the people, and for the people. But Whitman has told us that that very definition of who counts as a person is in question in the middle of the 19th century. That our hearts are hollow that we cannot use our minds correctly to see right from wrong, truth from falseness, justice from injustice. So we need a picture. We need a vivid picture to show us how we're incorrectly seeing the world in front of us. And that picture needs to show us the inherent dignity of all men, regardless of the color of their skin. I would argue that picture is drawn for us by Stowe in her novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. And I just, I want to read uh, in particular the language of, of the work and the segment that I'm going to read from, because I think the, the words kind of weigh upon you as you see just the ugliness of the institution of slavery. So here still writes uh, in this scene, as the slaves are coming back uh, from the plantation, the weary, dispirited creatures wound their way into the room and with crouching reluctance presented their baskets to be weighed. Now they're being weighed by the slave master, Legree, and Legree, upon them coming towards him, affects anger, fakes anger, and says, What, you lazy beast? Short again. And he turns to Tom. He says, Take this year guile and flog her. Strike her. And Tom says, I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to strike someone because that's unjust. And Legree says, you, you think you have a mind that can determine what justice and injustice is? Don't you know that what justice is on my plantation is whatever I tell you it is? If I tell you to do something, you follow the rule that might makes right. I am your master. I am your owner. All of your physical person is in my control. And Tom replies, Master, if you mean to kill me, kill me. But as to raising my hand against anyone here, I'll never do it. I'll die first. The Greek can't understand how this individual wouldn't follow his command. And he says, you probably think of yourself as, as some kind of pious man right now. You reference the Bible, all the rest. 
And Tom says just that. He says, no, no, my soul ain't yours, master. You haven't bought it. You can't buy it. It's been bought and paid for by one that is able to keep it. No matter, no matter, you can't harm me. Think of that powerful statement that Stowe is making. Here, a slave, Tom, understands the full dignity of man, understands what he is to do and not to do to another. And he may be owned, but his soul isn't owned by the greed. And as long as his soul isn't owned by the greed, the clear equality of all human souls made in the image of God is stated clearly for a country to see. That would be essential for us to move in the right direction so that we could exercise our moral faculties and put slavery once again on its ultimate course to its extinction.